Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross. I am your host and resource for self-care and mindfulness. And today, I have the pleasure of having Carmen Theobald with us. She is the founder and director um, of Horse Sense North and lead, and lead facilitator of Horse Sense North. And she is also an, an advanced EponaQuest instructor with Horse Inspired Wellness Facilitator, Empowerment Coach, Self-Defense, and uh, Self-Defense Instructor, and a Farrier Speaker. So Carmen, first of all, I think that's a, thanks for being here. Um, I believe that's a beautiful profession to be able to work with the horses. Can you share with us how you got started with all that? Sure. I mean, it's it's quite the story. Um, it's a bit of a longer story. Uh, would that be okay to dive into oh, that, Laura? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, super. So I actually grew up in Montreal without horses. And I had a handful of horse experiences, the occasional trail ride when I was lucky during a summer break, there was a moment that I could have an opportunity and I always found them completely beautiful and magnificent. And I really was drawn to them. But that wasn't my life. I was in the city, I was having a completely different path. Um, and I was uh, actually studying social services at Dawson College. And just for listeners um, or people watching, this part of the story can be a little activating. So please take care of yourself. While I was studying um, at Dawson College, there was a school shooting that took place. And I was one of the very fortunate people to not be in the heart of it, um, but I was hiding in a classroom for 45 minutes, listening as the shooter was getting closer and closer to where we were. And I truly believed that I was going to die. When we were rescued, basically, by police officers that day, um, they escorted us to a position of safety, silently taking us out the back door kind of thing. Um, when I got outside and I felt that sunshine on my face and I just had this moment of, of really leaning into the fact that I was alive and that feeling of being truly alive changed everything because for so many reasons, school wasn't actually the right place for me at that time in my life, not because of the school shooting, there had been other things going on inside that I just hadn't really felt courageous enough to listen to. And I, what was the most important thing for me to really live this precious life was to do the thing that was going against culture and family and society and every pressure and expectation that I possibly had on myself and that others had on me too, which was to leave school. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't this instant decision that day, but it was this process of reclaiming my life as my own and having that shift and having so much more courage to actually live my life allowed me to leave school at the end of that year or at the end of that school year, and eventually go traveling across what I thought was going to be across Canada. Um, <laughs> I went to this farm in exchange for room and board, and I planned with my my friend, my, my now husband, um, that we're actually going to go farm to farm all the way to British Columbia. We're in Ontario, so it's from one end of the country to the other almost. And what happened is that we ended up going to this one farm. We were there for what was supposed to be two weeks, and ended up being there almost two years. Wow. <laughs> so at this farm, they had vegetable gardens, maple syrup production, and the part of the farm that was the most interesting for me, there were 24 horses. Wow. And I was just completely obsessed with them. And they were also really helping me continue my healing journey and continue this process of turning up the volume on that little voice inside that I had found the courage to really connect with that day that I found myself alive after that horrific event. But that needs to be continually strengthened, right? It's kind of like a muscle. And so the horses keep asking me to strengthen that muscle. And in that process, it's a huge way that I am healing and reconnecting and becoming whole again for all kinds of reasons, not just that particular day. So working with these horses over that two year span 
I just couldn't imagine my life without them. And thank goodness, because that allowed me to be open to an opportunity that came up to become a farrier. So that's a person who takes care of horses' hooves. And I've taken care of thousands of horses' hooves now. That was 15 years ago that I took on that apprenticeship. And um, I ended up becoming business partners with that person. And I've worked with so many horses all over Ontario in that, in that capacity. And what they kept teaching me in this very intense role, because I am putting their leg between mine, I'm kind of like an unofficial foot doctor for horses. But the horses don't always show up and see me and go, oh, great, I want my feet. No, some of them do. That's amazing. <laughs> but a lot of them don't, right? And for good reason, yeah. just like us, they're coming with backgrounds of trauma. They're coming with pain. They're coming with experiences of not trusting the last person who had my job. So why would they trust me? Um, they might not feel safe in their environment. There's so many reasons why they're not feeling safe to cooperate. So learning how to work with them in this very intensive and honestly dangerous way, my insurance rates as a farrier would be equal to military. I'm not joking. <laughs> no, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so learning how to work with them in that capacity where I really wanted to also stay true to my values of having healthy relationship with them as much as I possibly could and, and to what extent I was aware. And so that, that awareness continued to grow. I kept learning with them and learning to work with them in that way where we can actually build healthy relationship with many of them at least and doing my best to show up with my own integrity and honoring who they were in that moment as well. Um, that's been the best education of my life. So what happened is they kept leading me back around to myself, back around to my own healing, and back to people, kind of back to my social services roots, because they were really inviting me to consider, like, how can I take these incredible, powerful, transformational experiences that I'm having with them and translate that to the human world? And so that's what led me to become a bridge builder between the worlds of horses and humans with all these different ways. And um, I became certified with Linda Kohanov in Arizona. That's Sapona Quest. So I'm an advanced instructor now. And I've had other certifications and um, learning experiences that I've done, combining that with my experience as a farrier and creating what we do now at Horse Sense North. Wow. And you and I have talked before, but I had no idea that that was even something that you went through. So thank you for sharing that. I know that that couldn't have been easy. Um, it's just, wow. So, and you've touched on a little bit, you, you kind of said like you were, you were drawn to the horses. How do horses like inspire us to overcome obstacles and find our empowerment in our lives? Mm -hmm. Oh man. In so many ways, <laughs> it's, it's hard ahead, to even where to start. You know, <laughs> I think one of the biggest ways that horses really help us is that they are always operating in this nonverbal language that is very authentic, honest, and coming from the body, right? They have, they're always sensing their environment with their nervous system, with their body. So they're kind of always sensing, engaging the environment, safe, not safe. And as prey animals or flight animals, they are going to show that in big ways, also as very large and powerful animals. So if they're not feeling safe, that can that's going to show up in lots of ways, um, but potentially very intensely, right, where they might go into that flight, they where they try to get away, they try might go into fight mode, where they're actually trying to fight off whatever situation they feel is unsafe for them or person or horse or whatever that might be. They might go into freeze, right, where it seems like they're just standing still, but their heart's beating and they're kind of frozen stiff. And um, that can also lead to kind of explosions or, or whatever that might look like in them. As humans, we're the same. We have the same nervous system, the same mammalian nervous system where we also go into fight, flight, freeze, maybe appease, right? That fawning, that kind of people pleasing. Mm -hmm. All of those are understandable responses to not feeling safe. And so being with the horses in that way, where we're trying to have authentic, mutually respectful relationship, we're not using coercion, we're not using force, we're not 
you know, the work that we do at Horse Sense North, for example, it's all at liberty. The horses have their full voice and choice of whether they're near us, whether they're not. They're going to reflect back to us what kind of state we're in in our body, not with judgment, but just honesty. And if we're feeling really tense, they're going to reflect that back to us. And if we're allowing ourselves to take the masks off that we're so good at wearing as humans, <laughs> then and leaning into that more vulnerable and calmer space in the body, they're going to also respond to that in really, really beautiful ways. So it's kind of like they give us this real-time biofeedback of what's happening in our body all the time, because that's their language. That's their mother tongue. And they're not the ones who are going to put the masks on. They might respond with fear and they might be shutting down. Not that that's part of our work here, um, but you know, that, that that's also part of who they are, but they're not going to go, it's fine when it's not fine. Right. Unlike us as humans, where we often have that kind of response of like, we'll just push through and it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. But really inside we're not. And so the horses invite us into the space where we can finally just be who we are. Yeah, and I've I've heard it referred to as like vibrations that horses like have a high, much higher vibration, so they can kind of feel your vibration. And it, it's kind of amazing because as as much as you may be like in awe of them and you want to, but what if you're you know you're, you're more fearful because this is a very large animal. <laughs> sure. I, I mean they're beautiful. I mean, but do they seem to know the difference? I guess is what I'm asking. Yes. So, okay. I'm going to give kind of two answers to this because there's one answer that's more connected to the horse work that we do. And one answer that's horses on a whole, on the whole. Okay. So I think horses on the whole, for sure, they, they're so intuitive. They're so emotionally intelligent. They have a very different kind of dynamic with their herd than we do as humans, but as humans in our broken cultures, in our broken society, right? If we were living in a healthy, connected, community-oriented way with relationship at the center, then it would look very similar to healthy herd dynamics in, in many re regards. Um, so horses really do pick up on all of the energy that we're always putting out all the time, just like they're putting out energy all the time. And so again, that's like their mother tongue, that's their language. So they're going to know the difference between someone who has a, um, you know, intention to manipulate or harm versus someone who's scared or angry, but not at them and having that like healthy anger, right? So they're going to respond to people very differently in that capacity. And then when you give horses the empowerment to, or help them feel empowered to actually step into a healing role where they become more of our guides. And that's a lot of what happens in the work that we do here it's incredible what can happen. I mean, I've seen things with horses that a body language expert would say is just not a thing. But then I watch the horses do something and it's like they're, they're so intently trying to help us raise our vibration, trying to help us raise our awareness, raise our well-being so that we can evolve with them in this very different way. And I think the part about them being powerful and kind of intimidating is one of the most important aspects of working with them, not so people can be scared. And I want to make that very clear that when we're working in a healthy environment with the horses who are properly prepared to do this work and are good fit, just like people, not every person wants to be a therapist, not every horse wants to be a therapist, <laughs> right? right. Um, but the horses that want to do this work and where we, we're doing it in that mutually respectful way, it is very safe because the horses don't feel the need to scream their answers, right? We can actually have a conversation. And again, having that liberty, it's a really beautiful thing because if they're feeling stressed, they can just walk away. They're not forced to be in that situation. Just like us, if we have the option to move us, move away, we don't have to scream when we're, because we're being forced to be somewhere. So similar in that sense. So I'm when we're in a good lesson for people, just walk away. <laughs> <It's> right? <okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I've also seen the horses, even with their freedom to walk away, intentionally kind of push people, not in a dangerous way, but in a way where they're like, step into your power. Come on, step into who you are. And so their, their power mixed with their deep vulnerability, I think is something that we can really learn a lot from as humans. 
Yeah, absolutely. So what lessons do you think we, we can learn from, you know, your, your journey of post-traumatic growth and resilience with them, with the horses? Oh, uh, well, um, I think it's, it comes down to that combination actually of, of power and vulnerability that we can be strong and soft at the same time that we can be powerful and gentle at the same time. And I think very often we think about healing or self care, we might have this thought that it has to always look kind of um, kumbaya. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kumbaya, and, woo -woo, I've heard all kinds yeah, of terms used for it. But yeah. <laughs> and I think the most effective and meaningful forms of healing and self care and wellness incorporate the kind of grittier side of who we are with this softer side as well, where we can really embrace that we are strong and powerful as we should be, as we need to be. But that doesn't have to stop us from also accessing our heart and vice versa. So if we're very, very, very heart centered, can we also learn how to be very grounded and rooted in our healthy power? And if we're very grounded in our in our power, can we also make sure that it's healthily balanced with a very strong connection to the heart? So I think they're really allowing us and inviting us to kind of play with them in that world where that's the only language that they'll truly respect and connect to when we have that balance of strength and vulnerability. Because if we're too far to one side of that spectrum or too far to the other, we don't feel so safe to them. And again, it comes down to that safety piece. Because if right. we are all, all heart, but no kind of rootedness, and we're kind of coming from this place of, I just want to be friends and I just want you to like me and hello, I'm going to give everything I want. It, it, I'll, I'll do anything for you. They're like, yeah, but who are you and what are you hiding? And maybe actually, are you not going to help me feel safe if there's a threat, right? If horses in their, in their lens, if there's a, a predator on the horizon, if we don't have that sense of strength with them, then they're going to go, well, I guess I'm on my own if I have to deal with this safety concern. Maybe I like spending time with you, but I'm not going to be able to lean on you. Right. And then the flip side, if we're all like control and power, 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 they're like, but where's your heart? And I don't trust you. So they really want that, that us to find that middle ground, not to be perfect with it, but just to play in that middle space where we can access both. Wow. Yeah. They're, they're like I said, they're really amazing animals. I've, I've been around them and there's, more similarities, I think, than we realize. Um, how would you say that the bond between humans and animals contribute to healing on both individual and systemic levels? I think this embracing of paradox of exactly what we we're just talking about can help individual and systemic challenges across the board. So often I, I feel like we have to, or people are, are, are pushed to be one side or the other on things. And they, they can really help us learn to become more whole where we don't have to see things, whether we're coming from an individual perspective or from a systemic issue, where we don't have to see things just from one lens, where we can see things from many at the same time. And that doesn't mean that we lose the compassion when we also have an ability to have strong boundaries. And it doesn't mean that we lose our ability to healthily protect ourselves. I'm also a self-defense instructor, so that's important to me as well, right? So we don't lose our ability to step into healthy protection when we also make a lot of space for feeling vulnerable, for opening our heart and really allowing ourselves to just feel how we're feeling. And I think that can translate to all levels of life and the world. Um, not that I think I can solve all the world's problems, but I think that the horses might. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to start. Yeah, exactly. It's a good way to start. Yeah. Well, I know we have more to dig into, and I know you can uh, share with us how your horse-inspired wellness techniques can help us navigate challenges, but we do need to take a break from a word from our sponsors, and we will be right back.
Hello, my name is Peter. I'm a Dharm Master. I teach Qigong at the Bright Beings Academy. What kind of Qigong do we teach? Well, it helps you to get your mind into your body and your breath very quickly. We really start off with quite quick movements to help cater for the busy Western mind, coming into stretching out the meridians, waking up the chakra system and the danjons, coming into Jigan meditation, which helps you to really focus on the energy in and around your body, bringing you into that beautiful calm state where you can sit and meditate really easily, whereas maybe before you found it really difficult. So Qigong at the Bright Beings Academy will help you get more in touch with yourself. My name is Carmen Theobald. I'm the founder and director of Horse Sense North. And we offer personal growth, leadership and team development, and trauma recovery with some Horse Sense. Horses invite us to get into our bodies, to step into the fullness, the wholeness of who we are. They offer us a space to do that without judgment and also a lot of encouragement that the wholeness of who we are is really welcomed and needed in this moment with them and also in the world. First of all, I have to say that is a beautiful ranch <laughs> and, and beautiful horses. I can see why you would be so happy there. Um, can you share with us, I think we've touched on a little bit, but how can horse-inspired wellness techniques um, help us to navigate the challenges and cultivate a sense of safety and wholeness? Yeah, sure. So um, first, to me, I just want to define horse sense because um, I think that's going to help me answer this question. So in human language, what horse sense means to me is clarity, connection, and courage. And I think the horses and learning from them, either with some horse wisdom, kind of different approaches to human stuff, or actually having that opportunity to be directly in relationship with the horses and learning how to be, they help us really amplify those three qualities that can help us navigate almost anything in life. So when we're more clear, when we have more awareness, when we have more of that, um, you know, we're able to really deeply understand what's going on within and around us. We understand that there's, there's more options. We see there's more choices and it's less confusing. And I think so much of our experience as humans, because being human is really hard. It can be very confusing. So adding some clarity and the horse is helping us get more clear about all kinds of aspects of what it is to be human and just alive and to be is so helpful connection to ourselves and others connection can be one of the, the scariest things we can do especially when we've been hurt when we've had connection that seemed safe but it wasn't connection that was just not safe period right not actually experienced healthy connection at all um it, it's very vulnerable and so they invite us to spend more time in that heart-centered place and learn how to connect in healthy ways with that clarity, right? Where we right. can also see that sometimes connection is not the goal. Maybe the goal is actually to have a healthy boundary, which will lead to better connection or have the opportunity to. But that if we're just trying to connect, 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 we may be also not seeing the bigger picture. So they help us do that in a healthy and safe way. But ultimately, having that very strong connection to self, no matter what, and that's going to help us navigate whatever we have to navigate. And courage, because we can be really clear and we can, we can be really connected to ourselves and our inner truth, kind of like that, what I was sharing earlier, you know, this, this muscle inside, if you will, this little voice inside that we kind of have to keep strengthening that muscle to turn up the volume on our inner truth and our, on that little voice inside and turn down the volume and all the pressures and all the doubts and all the expectations and all the things. But it also takes courage to put that into action. So can we turn up the volume on that little voice, be clear about what it's saying, connected to it, and also have courage to take some steps in the direction that that little voice wants us to go? Yeah, absolutely. Can you give us an example, maybe, I, I know with your story, but like something, your, maybe your clients, what the experience, how that process, what, looks, what that process looks like. For sure. One of the things we do here that I'm the most passionate about is serving those who serve others. 
we work with people from all walks of life. Um, but I really love working with others who are doing something in the world to support our communities and support a, a, a greater sense of, of connectivity in the world in a, in a healthy way. And in particular, I'm really passionate about serving first responders and public safety personnel and military. I, I would not be here today if it weren't for the incredible work that first responders did. And it's really important for me to to give back in that sense. So we run some programs specifically for that population. And um, very often they're coming with a tremendous amount of trauma and um, hardship. And often at kind of the end of their rope. And I think the horses give this very, very different approach to what healing and wellness can look like, feel like, sound like, taste like, everything in part because they are really inviting us to embrace both our power and our gentleness at the same time. And one example of that is this, this person I was working with. He understandably had a huge amount of anger. And his first go-to whenever he was stressed was to become aggressive and very domineering. And I'm saying understandably because it's just a survival response. Fight, right. flight, freeze, appease, all of these are understandable adaptive responses to stress and trauma. And for him, the, the response that kept him the most safe in his life was to fight. And so while he was at the farm, he was working a different muscle. He was really working this different muscle of connection, of feeling calmer, more regulated in his body, a different kind of place in our nervous system, not a survival place, but a place of safety. Mm -hmm. But by the end of the program, the horses knew he was ready for more. And this is what I mean by the horses have, have their own plan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they really seem to have intention around helping us become better, more whole humans. And so they almost said to him, okay, you did a good job at leaning into the softer side. And this horse that had worked with him to this point, who was really just having these lovely, soft, connected moments that were completely blowing him away. I mean, he, he hadn't had that kind of experience in over 20 years of feeling that safe and connected with anyone or anything. But then at the end of the program, the horses were like, yeah, but that's not quite enough. <laughs> and so this horse was really not maliciously, but kind of like pulling at him, po poking at him, kind of nagging at him to go, I'm going to make you get to that point where you feel frustrated. And you're going to learn how to express a healthy assertiveness without aggression. And they're poking at him, poking at him, poking at him. This horse, this horse's name is Flurry. He's amazing. And from the outside looking in, you could tell that this person is starting to not know how to cope because this horse that was giving him all of this sense of like, oh, everything's calm and sweet and safe and lovely. And now he's kind of like pushing my buttons on purpose. <laughs> I was just going to say he's pushing his buttons. Yeah, totally, totally. But he's pushing his buttons because, again, there's there's real intention there. And so the person is is not knowing really what to do and Frankly, I was ready to step in if I had to, concerned that he might slip into a state of aggression because that's what the body does. So we get to a certain point of feeling stressed and we just pop over, whatever that response might be. For some of us, it's going blank, kind of freezing, right? For others, it's wanting to run away. For him, it would have been more of a fight response. And of course, I'll protect our horses and make sure that we don't get to that point of too far down the line. But I also had this sense of like, just wait, just wait to see what's going to happen. And Flurry, this horse, walks over to where we have these boundary setting devices. We have these sticks that we use not to hurt the horses, not to tap them, just to actually create some healthy boundaries with space. Mm -hmm. okay. And we have a whole thing about teaching healthy boundary setting, and that's a big component of our work. But to have healthy boundary setting, we have to also be able to be calm and assertive at the same time, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the small concept of we need both. And how do we have them both together at the same time? So Flurry goes over, grabs the boundary setting device, which this person did not want to use because 
I believe he was concerned that he would use it inappropriately and fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So Flurry walks over, grabs the boundary setting device, gives him a demonstration of how to use it, starts waving it in the air (laughs) in the way that we do. (laughs) Right. Walks over to the person, offers it to him, handle first, like here, take it. (laughs) Now the guy is laughing because there's some humor injected, right? Uh And Flurry's going, see, I'm trying to teach you, get the lesson. So he hands him the stick, the person takes the stick with some lightness now, he sets the boundary in the way that we've been trying to teach. Flurry's like, excellent, thanks. Takes the stick, brings it over to the gate and drops it. And is like, we're done, lesson learned. (laughs) (laughs) And for this person, it was maybe the first time that he ever had the ability to step into an assertive place without tension. And that wouldn't have been possible without first the days of connecting and Mm -hmm. softening, but then learning that it's possible to also access his skill and strength and assertiveness, but without combining it with aggression and actually using it with calmness and heart at the same time. That must have been kind of kind of funny to watch though too to just to see that you know it's like horse is definitely the teacher (laughs) it was hilarious we were all laughing (laughs) everyone understood what the lesson was it did not need much explanation and it was it was very humorous and so that's one of their 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 big gifts is that they just seem to know you know if we think about that that volume dial what volume to bring in the lesson for someone who's gone in and I've had many people go into the, the the ring really, really low, like, you know, next to rock bottom, if not rock bottom. And the horses show up completely differently for that person versus the person who goes in and goes, I feel really sad and I'm struggling, but actually there's something underneath that, for example, healthy anger, that the horses are going to go, I'm going to wait till you're authentically showing up, even if it's with some energy that you may not consider appropriate for this moment, but it's appropriate because it's what you're authentically feeling. So they just seem to really exactingly know what is needed for that individual in that moment. And the same horse from one person to the next, when we're doing group work, they'll respond and react completely differently depending on what that person needs. And they're able to do that because they feel safe enough. They've also gone through enough of their own healing cycles to show up in that kind of incredible way. We can't ask a horse who is just coming out of their own severe trauma to step into that role. That wouldn't be fair to anyone. And it would probably go very badly and be very dangerous. Just like we wouldn't ask a person to step into the role of coach or mentor or therapist if they haven't already done a lot of their own healing. No one's perfect. We're all learning and growing, but we need to already have some of that healthy, secure foundation so we can show up healthily for others. Do you feel like it works on both sides that it's actually helping and healing for the horses as well? A hundred percent, a hundred percent in large part because the work is framed in a way where it's absolutely mutually respectful. If we have horse work and there are forms of horse work out there that do not have that mutual respect at the top priority. They're more seen as tools versus partners in the work. We don't get the same kind of healing that's bi-directional. And the healing that we do receive as humans and the growth is not nearly as powerful or meaningful because we're working with horses in more of a coercive way. So when we take away all potential for that coercion and manipulation, then we can actually show up with authenticity and connect from that place together with mutual respect. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think we've kind of already touched on it. that was kind of one of my next question about what impact do you think can bringing the bridging the gap between humans and horses have on creating a more inclusive and healing world? Yeah, connected to all of that, right? Like, yeah. how how would the world change? If we were operating from a place of more of a foundation of security within ourselves? where when we saw someone that was different, it wasn't a threat, it was just something to learn. And get getting this place of, of being able to get to know each other without going into these survival stress or trauma responses 
I think we have so many misunderstandings, so much escalation of, of challenge, so much um, disconnection, because we are coming from a place that is very hurt and not able to really stand solidly in who we are. And that means that we can't really see the other person for who they are either. Right, right. And I would assume, I mean, I know you're in Canada and you work with people locally, but I would assume you work with people from all over. Do they travel and just stay there to work the program? Do you have retreat? I mean, how do you, how does all that work? Yeah. So we, I'm excited to say that we now have clients who come to us from um, United States and Europe. Um, and I connect with people from all over the world online. So I do some online coaching where we have some of that kind of horse inspired learning that takes place. Um, and I have a, an online course as well that we can sometimes integrate into that. It's a self-guided course called Beyond Self-Care. Um, sometimes I do uh, a connected live Zoom call series, but the course is available um, anytime for people who want to just take that journey themselves. And that's really about the five roles of self-leadership and from this very horse-inspired and nature-based approach. And then with Horse Sense North, uh, as a, a, you know, in the in-person work, we have people who do fly in. We have a partnership with a semi-local um, hotel. We don't have accommodation on site yet. I really look forward to the day where we do, especially because my partner and husband, he's a chef and caterer, and he just makes amazingly delicious and nutritious food for everyone. So he makes lunches currently. We look forward to the day where we can feed people all their meals when they're staying here. But in the meantime, um, we do have retreats. We have programs. And um, I love working with people who are um, in in any walk of life, but I also really love working again with those who serve others. So we do quite a bit of leadership development, um, working with organizations, working with teams, and sometimes offering wellness programming for for staff as well. So yeah, I think the horses, are, they, they really just offer us such a, a wonderful approach to how to be a better human, no matter what we're talking about personally, professionally, as individuals, as a group, as a collective, as a society if we can learn how to be a little bit more horse-like, I think we could become a much more evolved human species. Yeah, definitely. And I would imagine you work with people too that are probably trying to maybe recover from some kind of trauma or need that change. Um, and maybe that, I think that was amazing. The fact that you left, you have this whole big plan to go across Canada, but then it just, your first stop was just, <laughs> whoop, that was it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to that farm and there's just, so much that I wanted to learn there and the horses really sucked me in and they were looking for long-term help and I, I wanted to be there. It was a perfect time in my life that I could. You know, I was 19. I had no other commitments. I had left everything behind. I had a backpack and I got on a bus and I showed up and that, that was just me, right? So right. I, I had a lot of flexibility at that time to make that decision and I'm so grateful that I did. Um, and, and for me to be really working on my own healing, they really have just helped me so much. Much, not just from that day, but from lots of other things, how I grew up, you know, there's lots of factors. Um, so just having the horses continue to teach me how to heal from my own trauma has been so beneficial. And I now work in collaboration with many therapists and social workers and mental health professionals to provide trauma recovery services for people. So sometimes we partner with um, addiction recovery centers. Sometimes we have the first responder programs that are really focused on helping people recover from more intense and severe complex trauma. Um, and the horses are just masters at teaching us that we don't have to stay stuck if we find ourselves in the dark if we find ourselves feeling broken, if we find ourselves very injured, we don't have to stay stuck there, that we can move forward and there is a way forward. Maybe you could share it too. Uh, and what does it mean to you to be able to approach personal growth and trauma recovery with horse sense? Sure. Well, I think one of the most important ways that horses invite us to grow and heal is to become more embodied and empowered so that we can become more whole again. And very often our approach to healing, especially in kind of our Western culture, <laughs> is very based in the mind. And our head is important. The story is important. 
But so much of trauma and so much of our stress lives in the body. And what can very often happen is that we have this fracturing that occurs where we get split into multiple parts of who we are. And we might even feel very disconnected from our physical sensations, from being having that feeling of being very landed, grounded in our physical body. But our physical body is where we have all this beautiful information, even if it's also hard, but it's also right. where the healing occurs. So if we can learn how to become more connected and safe in our experience of being in our physical body and feeling empowered in who we are as a whole person, everything becomes easier. Everything becomes more accessible. And the story of our trauma, the story of whatever pain we may have experienced becomes more and more possible to transform and grow into the next chapter of who we're meant to become. Yeah. And, and I mean, and look at you now, I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, what you have done with this. It's truly amazing. Um, how can we apply the wisdom that you've shared with us to serve others and contribute to a more hopeful future for all? I love your questions, Laura. I, I love <laughs> how much they really connect to this greater sense of well-being in the world and with larger groups, because that is absolutely my greatest hope is that the horses, and I think they are already doing this, can help us evolve more into that place of of connectivity, of, of unity, of of understanding each other more, of, of having a less fractured world that we're living in, because it is so hurting right now. And without needing to have any kind of po political anything, just recognizing that there's just so much pain. There's so much pain where people are not having their needs met. People are not safe. People are very disconnected. And the horses, I think, can really invite us to embrace a different approach to life where vulnerability is embraced where we are really using our power for the good of the herd. How can we learn to use our power truly for the good of the herd, whether that herd is our community, our family, our society, um, our school, our country, whatever that might be, including ourselves. So it doesn't mean to sacrifice the self for the good of the herd, but really right. using it for this inclusive approach where everyone matters. Even if we don't understand everything about each other, we can still recognize that we're part of this herd of being human in the world and that we matter. We're part of nature. The horses remind us that we're part of nature and that we have bodies that are responding to our environment and our nature all the time, just like they do. Our bodies are these tuners, receivers, and amplifiers of nonverbal information, of energy, of vibration, of everything that's going on. So can we allow ourselves to become more embodied, to really feel ourselves and what's going on around us, and allow that to really inform our heart and help us be rooted in the healthy power that we're meant to have? Yeah. And, and I love that yours, is, you know, like you said, there's no judgment you know, that, that, that to me, judgment is just puts on the majority of the stress, <laughs> you know, yeah. we put enough stress on ourselves being judged that just puts on piles on even more stress. So the fact that you do all that judgment free, and it's amazing when, you know, what a little bit of an environment change or something different can really do for your, for your soul, your inside, your perspective. It's, you know, I don't think enough of us take time to get out of the environment we're in, not realizing that maybe it's part of the environment that is affecting us or or making things the way it is. 100%. I couldn't yeah. agree more. So yeah. what else would you like to share with everybody? I, it, it's a beautiful topic. I mean, what's the best way for again? What do you want to share with them? Oh, well, you know, what? just on a personal level, I, for anyone who's watching or listening to this, I just really invite you to allow yourself to connect with that little voice. 
I think it's amazing how much we suppress that. And very often we have these voices in our head, but that's not the one I'm talking about. We can have a lot of those judgmental voices in our head, <laughs> judging ourselves, judging others, bullying, even abusive. But if we take a bit of a slower breath and allow our awareness to sink down a little bit deeper into our body, especially into our heart, just what, what does your heart say? Making some space for what your heart has to say. It might be a little whisper, it might be one word, it might be something that doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. <laughs> and, and then drop down a little further into our power center where we can access courage. Because I think we need a lot of courage today. We always have, but perhaps now in a massive way and continuing to become even more important all the time, can we become more courageous in the way that we listen to that voice listen to our heart and show up in this world in a way that we all deserve to show up. Yeah, absolutely. And that is very beautifully said too. So you're beyond self care program. You said that is something we can start at, right? Anyone can from your river. That's you right. Yeah. About the program. Sure. I'd love to. Thanks. Um, so one of the things that I'm so grateful to Linda Kohanov, that's one of my mentors in Arizona, my advanced opponent quest um, certificate. I am able to share a very powerful leadership model called the five roles of a master herder. Now this has completely changed my lens on life and leadership and horses and everything. And in a lot of ways, it just really gave words and voice to the things that I was experiencing and seeing all the time. So I just love her work for that. And I'm so grateful to be able to share it. So that five roles of a master herder is something that I have integrated into many organizations and teams. And I work a lot with it with first responders in the, that community as well. I've had people stand up, throw their chair back and go, why did I not get this at the beginning of my career? Like it, it's very impactful. So as I was offering this leadership model and thinking always in the lens of healing and um, self-care. Mm -hmm. I wanted to adapt her work and she gave me permission to adapt it into the five roles of self-care or the five roles of self-leadership. And so there's some crossover with her original work and a lot of it is um, from that really self-care perspective where how do we step into these five roles that we all have within us it's not like i have one role you have another right. we have these five parts these five roles and if we can learn to use them more in balance then we end up having so much more access to solutions to growth to healing and so this course beyond self-care it goes through all the five roles it goes through the strengths and challenges that each one has because just like muscles, we might be overusing some roles and over strengthening a certain muscle and then getting muscle injury and strain. So the same thing is true for the five roles. So where we'll, we're going to have um, potentially some muscle injury and strain in the roles that we're overusing, again, just for surf safety and survival. So no judgment, but it's going to help give us that clarity about which roles we're overusing, which roles we're underusing, and how to bring in more of what we need. And that includes visualizations and gratitude practices and all kinds of wellness activities combined with the learning. So that's something someone can access anytime. And um, I, I do my best to offer some of those live experiences through Zoom as well, through some group coaching. And I would assume it's kind of intertwined with a little horse sense and in there, right? Completely. So the five roles are based in nomadic pastoralist cultures. So Linda did this amazing research to look at groups of people worldwide and how do they move large groups of herbivores like horses from point A to point B with no fencing and no restraints. And what does it take to actually be able to do that effectively with skill where they don't all just scatter and they actually go to where they're meant to go and we have healthy relationships, right? And so it's having this fluid access to all five of these roles. So if we think about for sure with that horse, horse lens and nature lens, these five roles for self-leadership, how do we kind of herd ourselves, become master herders for ourselves to guide us into wellness to lead us into wellness 
Nice. Well, we have a few minutes left. So I know, so one of the good ways for people to connect with you is on your website, right? Horse Sense North. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So if, and if you also anyone... have a YouTube channel. I do. Yeah. I, you know, I haven't put a tremendous amount of effort into developing it. However, we do definitely have some videos on our YouTube channel. If people want to learn more about us, um, some videos about Horse Sense North. Um, I gave a, a thought leader talk last December, so that's available on there too. I'm really enjoying um, the kind of speaking side of my career that's unfolding, offering some of that Horse Sense and also really learning how to share my story um, in a way that can be beneficial for others. And also it's very healing for me to learn how to tell my story story in these new ways. Um, so many, so many horse inspired pieces to bring to the table that I think us humans can really learn from. Um, whether that's done, you know, through the direct horse experience, whether that's done through, um, you know, hearing a talk on stage, an interview, uh, having a, a frame, a leadership framework to integrate, no matter what, just having some of that horse sense that we can lean on and develop. So horsesensenorth.com, that's our hub for, for everything. And um, I really so appreciate having this opportunity to chat with you, Laura, and connect with your community. I think wellness and um, self-care from a, a broader lens <laughs> is so <laughs> underestimated of how much change that can create, not just for the self, but for everyone around us. The ripple effect, I have so much belief in the ripple effect. So if we can learn how to become healthier as our individuals with each other, I, I just, I really believe that that, that change is possible. Oh yeah, I, I love the ripple effect of positivity and self care and mindfulness. That's that's my kind of <laughs> that is my kind of ripple effect. But I think it's amazing what you do. And you know, until a couple of years ago, I didn't even know about the therapy and stuff, um, like Gestalt coaches and what you're doing with Horse Stents North. Because I know we've got a few. I had never heard of any. All of a sudden, I started pop up people, and someone mentions. That, I was like, wait a minute, I've heard of that. You know, so I, I think it's catching on. <laughs> I think it's catching on. It's one of those things I forget what the phenomena is called, but unless you know about it, you don't necessarily ever see it, you know, until you're involved in it. Kind of like racing cars. You may not know where tracks are around you, but if you start racing, all of a sudden you know where all the tracks are. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that. I forget what the name of that term is, but you know what I mean. Completely. So, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, have a couple of minutes. What, did, what, what, what would you like to leave the audience with before we leave? Maybe I can share a very quick story about one of our most amazing herd members that we had here. Her name is Grace. And Grace is no longer with us. She passed away last year. But I love to share a little part of her because when we think about when I think about leadership, when I think about healing, when I think about how do we really have that clarity, connection and courage in life, she's just the most amazing example I've ever come across. And Grace has been, you know, basically to hell and back in her life. And if someone had asked me 10 years ago when she came into my family, if she would end up becoming a therapy partner, I'd say, you know what, that's a really nice dream, but I don't <laughs> think it'll ever happen because it just wouldn't have been safe and she wouldn't have wanted to. And all these reasons why it was pretty clear, no. But as she did so many cycles of her own healing, she became the most rock solid therapy partner wanting to do the work, volunteering, insisting to do the work. She actually grew up in the RCMP, um, which is a, a police force in Canada, a law enforcement agency in Canada. And it was a horrific experience for her. And she ended up working with a lot of police uh, in her later years in such incredibly beautiful, impactful ways. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of her story because, again, I think when we're struggling, it can seem like we're going to be stuck there forever. And horses like Grace can show us that we don't have to be. And we can also learn to be really still very strong, even as we really open up our heart. Yeah. <clears throat> that is an amazing story. And thank you so much for sharing it and being on here with us and sharing that with everyone. So as, as always, I would encourage anyone that is feels felt stuck or if anything Carmen has said resonates with you, reach out and connect with her. That's what we're here for. Uh, to let you know you're not alone and that there's, there's help there for you. So thank you very much, Carmen, for being with us today. 
Thank you, Laura. It's such a pleasure. Thank you.